If you're expecting the world to be fair with you simply because you are fair, you are fooling yourself. That's like expecting a lion not to eat you because you decided not to eat him. When I hear full-grown adults prattling on on behalf of a billionaire about how unfair this is, that is, or this other thing is, it shows me that those people have clearly never had to work for anything in their life, ever, and they have had things handed to them. Look no further when you talk about unfairness than these four channels. Lynn Liaz, the Patriot Nurse, Abby Martin, Jennifer Veterans for Truth. Since 2017 and 18, the level of unfairness that has been visited upon them, nobody is going to bat for. Oh, people will go out and cry and moan and whine about how unfair life has been for a billionaire who thinks he's not being treated fairly in the media, but there's people here on this screen that are barely surviving now, barely able to live because of the real unfairness that's been visited upon them for simply just sharing their opinion. That's it. All I've done is show information that I don't think a lot of people have heard and people have accused me of being unfair to the billionaire. It's this concept known as both sidesism. That, well, if you say X amount of negative things about Mr. Trump, Florida Maki, I better expect to hear X amount of negative things about Kamala Harris. Well, if you're hearing nothing but negative things about Donald Trump all day, it sounds like you listen to the liberal media. If you're hearing nothing but negative things about Kamala Harris, it sounds like you're listening to right-wing media. So whatever you're complaining about not getting enough of is evidence of where you are. And besides, should we have allowed both sidesism when it came to Mr. Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell? Should we have allowed someone to say, okay, well, here's the pro-pedophile argument. Here's the argument about why what we think we did was actually perfectly fine and not against the law. I mean, with everybody reporting on Ghislaine Maxwell and what happened and Epstein and Donald Trump wishing them well, I suppose someone could make that allegation that that's both sidesism, right? Now, here's the part that's going to blow your mind. Ronald Reagan's FCC abolished something called the Fairness Doctrine, which, since 1949, required media to present both sides' opinions in the rare event they weren't just reporting straight news, like a tornado hit the town next over or something like that. A Democrat-controlled Congress passed a bill to reinstate the Fairness Doctrine in 1987. Reagan vetoed the bill. Wait a minute. Ronald Reagan? What? Why would he have done... That doesn't make any... I don't get... You see, there was the idea that this could actually violate people's freedom of speech. That if people didn't want to say super nice things about their opponent, they didn't have to. Okay, well, I guess that kind of makes, makes sense. So we go back to here. Life's not fair. Life is not fair. It's not meant to be fair. Because if someone was forcing fairness... They would be taking away your right to have an opinion, meaning you would then have to espouse something that you didn't agree with. Now think about this again. YouTube being this huge place where there are all sorts of people with all sorts of ideas and all sorts of opinions on anything and everything, being this clearinghouse, why would people who were in charge of the platform, decide to step in and pick winners and losers. I mean, isn't that what happened to Epstein, really? Didn't somebody step in and, and say, well, you know, there's both sides to, to what he wanted to do. 
You see, that's the key there. That's where things get a little bit murky. Now, that's battlefield of the mind. Thinking about things in that context. The idea of complaining about things being unfair to a billionaire, to a billionaire in life, is something that might be the single greatest piece of evidence we have that Americans no longer think. They just feel. It's just emotions. It's just the idea that, gosh, everything should just be always split right down the It's just sophomoric. Now, if you'd like to learn how to go back to what it was like when you were actually thinking and not feeling, join us, Florida Maquis Patreon channel. One U.S. dollar per month. Even less if you sign up for an entire year. Fully refundable, first 90 days, no questions asked. The first thing that you need to learn is how thinking actually works. Many people out there are just being led about by their emotions here and there and everywhere, and they believe they're thinking. When really all they're doing is just following their emotions. There's a really, really great article out here that delineates this, talking about how Donald Trump can go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth on this exact same topic, first being for freedom, then against freedom, then for fairness, then against fairness, then saying that he's being picked on, but then also bragging about why he's not being picked on, all literally within the same breath sometimes. It's technology and marketing, law blog, where you can go back through all of these, these different tweets and see him literally arguing with himself over the whole net neutrality is the fairness doctrine. Net neutrality being the fairness doctrine, being against that, but then also complaining that life is unfair and he's being treated unfairly all the time. It's, it's an amazing thing to see. Now, it does, however, juxtapose really well with this article from 14 September 2024. RT speaking. They're terrified of dissenting voices. RT comments on new U.S. sanctions. The new U.S. sanctions against this particular platform are proof that Washington, D.C. does not want people to hear views that diverge from the mainstream narrative. See, what they've done now is they've said there's a mainstream approved narrative of those on the right and a mainstream approved narrative of those on the left. And very rarely do they ever come together in unanimity. However, they do in this particular su subject, Venezuela. Talk about unfair. A U.S. SEAL, a U.S. Navy SEAL, along with a group of a very clandestine group of people from around the world, and hundreds of rifles have been picked up, confiscated, and brought into possession of the Venezuelan government. And of course, what do we know? What do we know? Of course, here we are, mainstream media, uh, U.S. claims of CIA plot to kill Maduro, just like Hillary Clinton tried to do, just like Barack Obama tried to do, just like Donald Trump tried to do, are categorically false after Venezuela arrests six foreigners, including a U.S. Navy SEAL. Why was a U.S. Navy SEAL in Venezuela to begin with? Oh, because there's a story. There's a story. It goes, be careful what you wish for, you might just get it. You know how Donald Trump's been talking about, we're going to deport largest deportation, largest... Uh, all this kind of stuff? Well, strange story. Many people are actually returning to Venezuela. You see, what this is proof of what this channel reported so many years ago, that Washington, D.C. Was, was trying to force Venezuela to dollarize its economy and get rid of its own sovereign currency because they wanted control of the economy and then eventually direct control of the oil and the gold. Now, when you read through these stories of people who fled and then went back, you'll find something very strange in one of these reports. This guy was a mu musician. He said, you know, the, the pandemic's not cruises. Garcia returned home to visit his family. 
He was struck by how much Venezuela changed. I was in shock at first, he said. Suddenly the supermarkets were full. People changed, too. I came back, and everything had to be paid in dollars. Wow. Imagine that. You see, the same guy is still in charge of the government. They're still a socialist country. But now, but now everything is done with dollars, and all of a sudden, sudden things are all sorts of way better again. Proof. Proof of exactly everything I reported. Were people leaving? Yes. Was socialism the cause? No. Was U.S. sanctions and the U.S. wanting to take over their economy the reason? Yes. And all of a sudden, people are going back to Venezuela. Things are better in Venezuela. I don't want to go back to the United States anymore. My family is everything. Being away from them was too hard. These are quotes. This guy teaches German in Venezuela. This guy went back because of his mom. This guy we just covered. I feel great here. I wouldn't leave my family and country again. I felt really lonely. She said here, I have my family support. I have a house here now. I know the people around my neighborhood. It's easier to find a job. My children are happy and more than happy. She said, I felt peace. Now, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting that the one delineator now that makes the difference is the forced dollarization of the economy down there? They aren't capitalist free market. They're still just as socialist as they were. In Venezuela elections, bringing migrants back home is on the ballot 28 July 2024. DHS continues direct repatriations of Venezuelan nationals. You see, why, why is me just showing a picture that Donald Trump is smiling in with, in this case, Prince Andrew? Why is that unfair of me? This isn't a doctored picture in any way, shape, or form. This isn't a doctored, doctored picture. I, video or two ago, shared a link where you could see Donald Trump in all his glory with a whole bunch of really young girls and his hands all over him. Why is that unfair? If you want to talk about really, really, really unfair, look no further. Some of these numbers aren't exactly accurate. Like, for example, Patreon Nurse, 570,000 subs, 41 million views. She had way more views than that. They came in in multiple sweeps and forcibly deleted a lot of her videos, taking away those views. She's far more views than 41 million. My channel has about that many, and I only have about 128,000 subscribers. Lindley Oz, and I've only been making, to be, to be fair, I've only been making videos since late 2016. So I'm just going on about eight years now. Lindley Oz and the Patreoners have been on YouTube since, well, way, way, way before that. I don't want to say what year, but it's got, it's got to be 2010, 2009, something like that. Only 168,000 subscribers, only 51 million views. Abby Martin also, the Empire Files, who tried to also tell the truth about Venezuela, banned. 374,000 subs at Empire Files, only 20 million views. And Jennifer Veterans for Truth, who actually had a real fix to a problem we faced, oh, about four years ago. And people were using it, people were benefiting from it, and they loved it. And they banned her as well. Because they all had the ability to move the needle. So I guess... To me, it just falls on deaf ears when I hear people complain about Florida Marquis not fair to Donald Trump. Donald Trump's down to his last $4.7 billion. He's only got a little over two dozen golf courses left. I mean, what's he going to do when, when he has to actually sell a golf course to pay for anything? I mean, he has actually, I think it's closer to three dozen golf courses to be truthful all around the world. $4.7 billion, all custom-made suits, never wears the same one, golfs all the time. 
travels around in his own private jet, has never had to probably fix his own meal his entire life. Never had to actually go to the kitchen and actually fix a meal for himself. Wash a dish. Go to the laundry, wash clothes, fold clothes, sweep a floor, change oil in a car, mow a lawn, and I hear people complaining that I'm being unfair to the man. That I'm being, it's just hilarious. People that are supposedly on the side of the working man. Expecting the world, even if I was being unfair, expecting the world to be fair. When this whole make America great again thing, you know where it came from? Make America great again came from Ronald Reagan. Look it up. And he abolished the fairness doctrine because it violated free speech. Is basically the idea is like, look, people are going to go out and people are going to say what they're going to say and they're going to have their opinions. We're not going to get the government in the business of saying, okay, okay, you have spent three hours watching Fox News today, folks. We're going to mandatorily now change the channel on your TV so that you have to watch three hours of CNN. How many of you would like that in the name of fairness? If you want to tune in news, I'm sorry, you have you have reached your allotted amount of news watching that you have wanted to watch today of conservative media. Now, now if you want to watch anything else, the channel is automatically going to tune itself to CNN. And once it's on, we're not going to let you shut it off. Yeah, you see, we're going to take control of your TV, take control of your computer, take control of your radio. And anytime you turn it on, for however many minutes it's on, it's going to be, you know, Being fair. Being fair, because we know that's the goal. Everybody has to be fair. So, once again, I guess maybe I should ask. I should ask, do you want me to talk about uh, the angle that Jeffrey Epstein might, might, maybe his defense? Defense of what he did? Should I talk about, I mean, everybody's talked about the negative parts of what what Epstein did. Maybe we should talk about the, the positive parts in his point of view, huh? Same thing with Melania Trump. I mean, she's supposedly the classiest first lady ever, and but yet she's also all over the internet wearing well. I guess less than things than what people would call classy. Maybe we should have, you know, discussion of why that should be allowed as well. For every image of her, you know, wearing something appropriate, we should show images of her wearing something inappropriate, since they're out there. Fairness. Fairness. Hilarious. Ask these people about fairness. If you'd like to understand why you're so obsessed with fairness, join us. Florida Maki Patreon channel. One US dollar per month, even less if you sign up for an entire year, and fully refundable first 90 days, no questions asked. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Also, pray for Lynn Liaz, the Patriot Nurse, Jennifer LaFontaine, Jennifer Veterans for Truth to some of you, and Abby Martin. Pray for them. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. See you guys next time.